Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to unwrap our models manually. Now we see here, and we saw in the previous video, that Blender 2.8 now tries to do a default unwrapping of a 3D object. And while it's pretty good, it's nowhere near as efficient as what we might need for texturing 3D objects for games or animations. So for most objects, you're going to have to unwrap your models manually anyways. But things like the cube and symbol shapes will probably be fine just to use Blender's unwrapping. Now before we get any further, there are three things that you need to know about the UV image editor before we get started. The first is that texture will only exist inside the 0 to 1 space. And what I mean by that is... You see how there's this dark gray outer exterior and a light gray interior? And I'll kind of outline it a little bit, right? Everything that's light gray will have texture on it. This is known as the zero to one space. So no matter how big your 3D object, no matter how many faces, edges, or vertices you have, the entirety of the texture, when it's combined, will need to fit inside this zero to one space. So that means that some of the details or some of the faces that you have could end up being pretty small. But just keep in mind that that's standard operating procedure if you're making games because Unreal and Unity at this point don't have the ability to use multiple texture maps with one material yet. That's more of a process for making movies with Maya and other things. So that's thing number one, that all of your texture has to be inside this zero to one space. Thing number two is that the selection modes between the UV editor and the 3D viewport are different. If we take a look at the 3D viewport, we have our standard face, edge, and vertex selections. And so if I were to select a face, you can see that face is also selected on the UV editor. However, if I select everything on the 3D viewport and select a face, it does not change what I have selected on my cube. So, a couple of things to note about that. If we look at the top left of the UV Editor, we see that the UV Editor also has its own selection tools. So, we have Face Selection, which is what we're used to. We also have Edge Selection here, where we can select individual edges on our UV map. And we have Vertex Selections, which we're used to selecting as well. So, we notice, though, that there is also a fourth option, which is the UV Island Select. Now, a UV island is just a group of faces that are connected together. So if we choose the island select and I click on any one face, it's going to select all of the linked faces to that particular face. Now, when we finish the unwrapping video, we could have different islands here, and so it wouldn't select all of them necessarily. But anything that's connected to this face is what will be selected. Now, if you don't want to bother with these and think, you know what, I'll just select faces and I want them to be synced up with what I currently have in the uh, 3D viewport, there's also a button here that allows you to keep the UV and edit mode mesh selections in sync. So if we check that box, you can see our selection buttons have changed to face, edges, and vertices, and whatever we have selected uh, is now changing to update with the 3D viewport. So if we select face and we have this face selected, you can see that in the 3 viewport, that face is also what's selected. And then we can continue on and see how this cube is actually unwrapped and where the faces are. So there are benefits to using both options here, but just know that uh, throughout the course, I'm pretty much going to keep the UV and edit mode mesh selections in sync with one another until maybe we actually get to the walkthrough video at the end of the course. So without further ado, let's actually talk about how to unwrap a model in the 3D viewport. All right, before we talk about the unwrapping manually, what I want to talk about is the third option because I forgot it. Now this option is actually not working as of this video, but I'll explain what it's supposed to do so that when the real version of Blender drops, it's an option that you can use. So right now, there is an option called Live Unwrap. And what this will do is it will continuously unwrap your selected UV island while moving vertices around. That's complicated, but essentially what it means is what I'm about to explain with doing it manually, you'll have to re-unwrap your object every time. With this option turned on, however, 
you don't have to do any re-unwrapping. When you add a seam, it will unwrap your UV map again for you. And this is a very useful tool. It saves a lot of time. But like I said, unfortunately, at this moment of this video, it is not a functioning option of Blender 2.8's beta. So I'm going to leave it checked on, UV live unwrap. And then uh, hopefully when it drops, if you guys are watching this after the official release, this option will be working and present for you. All right, now let's talk about how to unwrap manually. All right, so unwrapping a 3D model is pretty easy. All you have to do is select your entire mesh, right click, and then you'll see unwrap faces, UV unwrap faces, as long as you're in face select. If you're in edge select, you won't have that option. So if you want to find it normally though, all you have to do is hit the U hotkey and you'll get your UV mapping options or be in face select and have a right click context menu bring it up to you. So the UV unwrap faces. Now I'll cover these different options in the future. There are a few uh, that kind of work well, but for the most part, I don't use these for any of my UVing. Uh, and I'll explain why. I just don't think it's going to give you an accurate um, UV map. And I have found that it doesn't accurately follow the rules and guidelines that I have for myself for UVing. But I will cover these in a future video after the course is released. So the command that we're going to use is just the unwrap command. Now the unwrap command is the standard default command. And essentially, if we had seams on this object, it would unwrap it for us. But we don't have any seams at the moment, so it didn't do anything. So let's add some seams here. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select some edges here. And I'm just going to right click now. And if I have edge select on, what I'll see is I'll have a mark seam and clear seam in my right click menu. If I hit mark seam, now these edges are marked as red. So that when I hit A and then hit U for unwrapping, I can unwrap here, and we see now there is a new map for, uh, provided for us because we've added seams and it has actually unwrapped our object. But this is uh, kind of a bad UV map, so what we're going to do, we're just going to finish out this UV map a little bit better, right click again, mark those as seams, and unwrap one more time, and we end up with basically the map we had before. Now it's not identical to the map we had before, but it is basically the same. So it's pretty close, but it's not identical. If we wanted it to be identical to the one we had before, what we would need to do is clear that seam and mark this seam and then unwrap that one more time. And then this is going to give us an identical layout. It's just upside down at a, you know, rotated 180 degrees. So that is how we unwrap things manually. That's the basics of unwrapping. Now, unfortunately, there's not a 100% correct way to do it. it. There's not a formula for unwrap this way every single time. So I do have a couple of guidelines for UVing or making UV maps that help me out significantly and I think will help you out too. So rule number one, you want the stretching to be as limited as possible. Now, what does that mean? We haven't covered that. That'll be in the next video. Rule number two, are the islands as connected as possible, right? We've already talked about these islands. Uh, are they as connected as possible? Or did we go ahead and select all of the edges and mark them all as seams and unwrap them this way, right? That's connected, but if we select an island, we see it only grabs one. So it's not actually connected because all of the edges are seams. This is a bad way of unwrapping generally. Uh, rule number three, does what you see in your UV editor make sense to you? Now that comes in more important when you're dealing with more complex objects such as the Suzanne monkey head. But when we bring the monkey head back up, and we check its UV map, we can see, hey, there's kind of a face here. Maybe these are ears. These are the eyeballs. And so what we see makes sense to us. And then the last thing is, are the islands separated enough? And this is kind of the last thing I check for, but the separation between the mesh islands will prevent a bleed over from textures uh, as we apply color. So the next video, we're going to talk about what UV stretching is, which is rule number one, make it as limited as possible, and some methods to fix stretching to provide us the best possible layout of our UV map. 
I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.